battery is about to die. <sighs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today I'm doing a talk through tutorial on how I got to this look, which is a nice neutral look for my interview today. I thought it'd be fun to share just because I know for work or for especially for an interview that it can be really nerve-wracking you know i mean the interview itself can be a bit nerve-wracking and i know that getting ready for it is stressful um so i thought i would just go through and film doing my makeup for the interview i really wanted to go simple but defined so i wanted to define like my eyes and lips just a little bit of contour, nothing too crazy. Essentially focusing on the base and on making it commuter proof because I am going on quite a trip to get to this interview. So if you wanna see how I got my interview ready look this morning, just keep on watching. All right guys, welcome. I went ahead and washed, moisturized. I didn't prime yet, but I did throw on my brows real quick because I really had to sit down and focus. <laughs> All I did was define like the tail end with the, the dip brow from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And then I filled in the middle part with the like dark brown shade from my Pan That palette. And you know, I have to say of all days to have a good brow day, I'm grateful. <laughs> okay, so since I'm going to be going in with like a very matte uh, foundation I'm gonna go ahead and prime with a nice moisturizing primer and then just one to fill in pores so I'm gonna use the Too Faced Hangover RX all over my face just to moisturize and then to fill in my pores I have really bad pores like right here um, so to fill those in I'm gonna go in with the Smashbox Photo Finish foundation primer in the pore mortimizing pore mortimizing in pore minimizing So I typically prime and then do my eye makeup just so that I give the primer enough time to actually sink into the skin and not just sit on top of it. I mean, you can go in and do your foundation right after you prime, but I find that mine looks better and lasts just a little bit longer throughout the day if I let the foundation or if I let the primer actually like sink into the skin for a little bit before I jump in with my uh, foundation. Now that we're all primed, I'm gonna go to the eyes. So since we're going to an interview, we really don't want to do anything like crazy with the eyes. All I really want to do is prime so I can cover up like my oily lids. I want to define the eye just a little bit. I want to line it, probably not too big of a wing, maybe a little bit of one, and then mascara. It really isn't going to be too much. So I would suggest going with your tried and true products just throughout this process. When it's a big event, like a like an interview or like a wedding or something you really don't want to try anything new you want to stay with your tried and true products you really want to go with what you know is going to last especially think of your commute for this interview i'm taking a bus to the city where i have to transfer to a train going uptown so i'm looking for makeup that is going to be sweat proof because today is actually supposed to be the hottest day like we've had it's february and it's supposed to be like 70 degrees outside <laughs> This, this is New York City, just to let you know. So it's going to be hot. Um, so I'm looking for sweat proof makeup. I'm looking for um, more of a matte finish and overall like a low key, like no makeup kind of makeup day. With that being said, I'm going to go in with my favorite eye primer. This is the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. And I just take a little like flat brush like this. I just like to pat it in a little bit just to get it in the skin a little bit more and then pat out where the primer meets like the nose bridge just so that it blends a little bit better. Then what I do is take like one of the closest like skin toned powders that I have and I set the eye with that. For me, I take the lightest shade from the Kat Von D shade and light palette. You can also use, um, if you have an eyeshadow palette that has a skin tone shade in it. There's also a nice shade. This is a new palette that I just picked up from Maybelline. It's one of their City Mini palettes. I didn't know they had this one. It's called Matte About Town. And it's actually a really nice palette. And this shade right here in the middle is great for doing the same thing. But I just take the powder, take a generous amount of powder, and just set the primer down. And if you've already done your brows, you don't want to 
get it in the brow, so just be careful. Yep, and then just do the same thing to the other side. So if you're happy with how that looks, it's very basic. I just basically set the eye just so that my really oily eyelids don't show up throughout the day. So you can, see, you can leave it like this and then move on to the next step, which would just be like liner and mascara. Or you could go in if you have hooded eyes like I do, or if you want to add just a little bit of definition to your crease, I'm going to go in with just a light, like beige, light brown. Make sure it's a warm light brown, because if you use a cool toned light brown and that's the only sh like shadow that you put on, like I found that it makes me look really tired. And we're not going for that. We're looking for bright, fresh, and wide awake. So again, using just a big fluffy brush, I'm going to go into that matte about town and I'm going to take this light shade right here. Just a nice, light, warm brown. If you have a contour shade that you really like, you could also use that as well. I just don't want to go too dark. And with this, you can really build up the color to as deep as you want. See? Just like that. Just like a little bit of a difference. You can see it's just a little bit more definition. And then I'm going to take a smaller fluffy brush and... Just add a little bit more of that same color to like the outer V. We really don't want to add too much of anything to this look. All you really want to do are define the features that you already have. So we'll just do the same thing to the other side. That's where I'm going to leave the eyes right there. If you feel comfortable doing so and you want to add like a little bit of like a shimmer to your lid, you're more than welcome. I just want to keep it mostly matte and then just go in with liner and mascara. So the two liners that I use, I have the Physician's Formula um, Eye Booster in Ultra Black and then I have the NYX Epic Ink Liner. Typically what I do is I use this because the tip is just a little bit smaller and it's better for drawing out a wing. I use this to actually make the wing. And then to line the rest of my eyes and fill in the wing, I use the next one. So I really don't want to go for too much of a wing with this look. So I think I'm just going to line my eye and maybe just flick out just like a little bit right there. But we'll see if the eyeliner gods are with me today. And we are back so my camera cut off and I actually messed up the eyeliner on this eye so bad that I had to go in and start over that's okay be patient with yourself you know everyone's gonna get interview jitters in the morning and you just want to always leave yourself time for anything I'm leaving fairly early for my interview and I actually don't have to leave for like another hour and a half so I'm really sitting down, taking my time, and just kind of relaxing as I'm doing this. Or trying to, trying to relax as best as I can. So the eyeliner is on. As you can see, I did just a little bit of a wing just to really define the eyes. Before we get into the face, I'm going to go ahead and put on mascara. So I'm just going to curl them real quick. And I'm going in with the Essence Lash Princess Volumizing uh, Lash... False Lash Effect Mascara. I always forget the full name. So just... Okay, so that's it for the eyes. I'm gonna leave them like that. I'm gonna go ahead and wet my beauty blender because I definitely forgot to do that. And then we'll jump into the face. So before we get into the foundation, I'm going to go in with a color corrector under my eyes. The one that I'm using right now is the Benefit Boing Airbrush Concealer. It's just a nice little salmon color concealer right there. Um, you don't have to use one that's this high-end. LA Girl does have kind of the same thing. I have it in my collection, but I haven't opened it yet since this one was already opened and it's been open for a while. I'm trying to get through this one first. And then I'm going to go in with the LA Girl one later on. So for this concealer, let me get, where's my concealer brush? So I just take like a little flat concealer brush and I begin to, and I begin to just spread this out under my eyes. Okay, and this is fairly thick, so I'm gonna try to go in with a thin, thin layer. And then what I do 
is I buff it in with a brush first. So this is the Morphe E8. It's just kind of fluffy. And I buff it in. And then I go in with my beauty sponge and smooth it out. I have really fine lines under here that crease with the majority of what I put underneath there. So I'm trying to smooth them out to the best of my ability. As you can see, I already have some lines. You know, that happens sometimes. We'll see if the concealer can cover those up. Now I'm gonna go in with foundation. My favorite foundation that's matte right now is the Peach Perfect Comfort Matte. This is in the shade Warm Nude. This was my perfect like summer shade, so right now it's too dark. So I have the LA Girl Pro Coverage like white mixer that I'm gonna mix in with it. The reason I'm wearing this one, not because, nor not just because that it's matte and that's what I'm going for today, it's also the only completely transfer proof like foundation that I've tried that's actually been transfer proof. And with my commute and with I'm going with everything that I'm like going through today, I really want to rely on my foundation. So I'm gonna do like a pump and a half of this to a pump of the LA Girl. And then what I like to do is take that same concealer brush that I just used and use that to mix it up. I don't like to mix it up with my hands because then you get dirty. Or if you mix it up with another like fluffy brush, it will absorb some of the product. So I do like using a nice synthetic flat concealer brush to mix everything together. Then I got a nice shade match right there. So then I use this to just kind of paint it on. So I'm gonna do the bottom half first. So since I have a little bit left on the palette, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit on my neck. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with concealer. So I have the Naked Skin Concealer. This is like the little mini. I have the shade Light Neutral. So I'm going to use this under my eyes. And then on like my smile lines because I know that I tend to crease there throughout the day. So I'm going to try to bake there. Just to prevent that from happening a little bit. Okay guys, sorry about that. My SD card definitely just filled up. But I just finished blending out the concealer under my eyes and around my mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and set it with a powder to bake. So I'm using the loose powder from Maybelline, the Fit Me. I have the shade 10 Fair Light. This is actually almost gone. So I'm having trouble getting a lot of it out of the container. Yeah, I can only get like a little bit at a time. So I'm going to take that. Take what I can. And I definitely got powder everywhere. So that's why I would really suggest not getting dressed until you're done. Typically in even like my everyday life, getting ready for work and whatnot, I don't get dressed until like right before I leave. <laughs> so I'm in like my coffee shirt, um, just chilling because you will get powder if you do bake. <laughs> Could you imagine if they came out with like a a makeup bib that you could put on when you're like gonna bake and use powder <laughs> all right anyway so while that's baking i'm gonna go ahead and just set the rest of my face my favorite powder for this recently has been the ambient lighting powder and diffused light from hourglass i had a giant pan in the middle so i'll just take a little bit of this and set wherever i didn't bake so forehead Like all those are your cheeks, under the chin. Okay, and then as I finish uh, waiting for the bake to set, I'm just gonna go in and set the eyebrows. I have a clear lash, clear lash. I have a clear brow gel from Anastasia. You really don't need this one. I heard NYX has a great one. I just happened to get a sample of this one at Sephora and then I liked it, so I picked up the full size. So I'm just gonna brush this through, set the brows. This also gets out any of the powder that you happen to get in them. 
which is why I don't set them right after I'm done with them. I always wait until after I'm done applying powder and everything. So normally I would leave this bake on for just a couple of minutes um, and then just brush it off. I have a big fluffy brush here from Sigma. Any fluffy brush will do. Brush away the excess. You want to be really gentle. You don't want to push the like foundation underneath it. You just want to lightly dust the powder off. So I used to make that mistake. I used to go in and like, and it would like move my product underneath. You really just want to lightly dust away any excess. Now that the face is set, I'm going to move into like bronzer slash contour. Oh, oh god. And if you itch, oh. Oh, like that just going off the brush. There's a brush area, all right? And your itch is gone. Anyway, so I'm using the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, the one right down here. There's a little bit of pan in it. And I have like a, this is I think a contour brush from Morphe. This is the R10. So I'm just gonna use this, swirl it in. Make sure you tap off the excess. And I'm gonna just shape out where I want the majority of this to show up. I don't do my forehead just because I think with my face shape it looks a little weird but if you like it on your forehead you could take it like right there right there right above where your arch is for your brow but I take it in the hollows of my cheeks bring it up to like the temple area then I take it a little bit under my chin and then I begin to define the jawline And I think that this brush is like the perfect like size and shape to do the kind of defining on here that I like. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more to my cheeks and then we're gonna go in and blend it out. I don't like using this to blend on my face because I feel like it can be a little harsh and it can move product around. So I like to use this to set the product down. And then I go in with like a duo fiber kind of stippling brush and I use that to actually blend it in and I find that that gives me the most natural looking like blend okay so from there we're gonna go to highlight I'm gonna go with a really subtle highlight so my favorite nice subtle highlight is from essence it's the pure nude highlighter so I'm just going to take a little highlighting brush, brush it in there, and very lightly just highlight the tops of the cheeks. I go a little bit up next to the brow, just a little, a little on the nose. Now normally I would highlight the cupid's bow as well, but because I know it's going to be hot and I don't want it to look like extra sweaty I'm not gonna highlight it I will though take my I have a little inner corner brush from Sigma right here and I do like to match my inner corner highlight to my face highlight so I'm gonna take just a little bit right there and highlight the inner corner Okay, I do go in with all of my setting sprays um, before I go into my lip products because I found that it can kind of mess with my lip products. So what I like to do for my setting sprays is I normally use two of them, one to kind of melt everything together, melt all the powder into the face, and for that I use either the Milani Make It Last or the Smashbox Primer Water. They both turn out great. This one does make a great primer as well, whereas the Milani as a primer isn't that great, but for just melding everything, all your powders together, they do work the same. So I'll go in with one of those, and then I go in with an actual like extending makeup spray. And right now I have the Urban Decay All Nighter. I also have the same one from Scandinavia. I have a couple of tiny bottles just like that. Again, they're basically the same thing. I found that higher end setting sprays are really great for prolonging the wear of makeup. Because you can find like great sprays at the drugstore that can meld everything together, but it won't necessarily extend your makeup wear, if that makes sense. So I do like to go in with both. And after that is dried, I go in with the other setting spray, the All Nighter. So 
So now everything's set, I'm gonna go into the last step, which is the lip. Today, I'm gonna go with a traditional bullet lipstick just because I know that should it wear down, it wears down gracefully. I could go with a liquid lipstick, but I don't wanna risk like the, um, the dry down looking a little cakey. I do wanna, since I am wearing a matte foundation, I my thing stop squeaking since i am wearing a very matte foundation and matte eyeshadow i do want to go with just a little bit of gloss on the lip so i have a little kit that i got from sephora it's the mark jacobs little lip kit it's in everything's in sugar sugar so there is a bullet lipstick little mini there is a lip gloss and there is a lip liner i do love those little value sets that you can get from sephora i think it was 20 dollars for everything you do get a great a good amount of product like that's a decent amount of lipstick right there it is quite a large like vial of lip gloss and it is a great way to try out something before you buy like a full-size lipstick or anything and there we go i'm gonna go ahead and just blow dry my hair real quick and i'll be right back for the final look Okay guys, so this is the final look. I really like it, it's nice and soft and not too out there, but you do have a nice base. You do define the eyes and the jaw and the lips and I'm really happy with how it came out. So if you liked this tutorial, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up so I know if you wanna see any more in the future. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and if you're getting ready for an interview or if you're about to go on one or if you're in the middle of a job hunt right now, I really wish you all the luck in the world. I know it is a really hard process and that it's really nerve wracking, especially if you're going in for an interview, if you're on a phone interview. So I really just want to wish you luck, let you know that you're not alone and that you'll do fine. Just be yourself, show up early, show up early and be yourself. Those are the two. <laughs> So thank you for spending today with me. Let me know down below if you're going on an interview or how it turned out. I would love to talk to more people. So thank you and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.